All right, so good morning, everyone. You probably are hearing a this Zoom is being recorded message right now. And just a reminder, we do record these and we send them out to the school community for anyone who's unavailable to attend. I would like to welcome everyone to our final PTO meeting of the year. It's incredible to say that this year seems to have gone by quite quickly. We have a pretty full agenda and we're going to get right into it. Jan, if you want to start, don't forget if you're participating participating on our agenda or if you have any questions, just a reminder to unmute yourself and we're ready to go. So Jan, thanks for your time this morning. Good morning. I, As TJ said, I can't believe it's the last PTO meeting of the year. It has gone by so fast. Uh, the Zoom meetings have been well received and well attended. The flexibility of viewing the recording after the meeting if you weren't able to attend seems to be popular as well. Uh, so we plan to continue with Zoom meetings next year. However, if you have a strong feeling about meeting in person, please email me or Mr. Salutary, and we would love to discuss that with you. I think next on the agenda is the vote on the slate for the PTO board next year. General members, families of current Daniel Han student and staff are invited to vote on the proposed slate. A majority of the votes cast will determine the outcome. The proposed slate of officers for the Daniel Ham PTO executive board positions of secretary and treasurer for the academic years of 2023 to 2025 are secretary Nicole Wiles, her second term, and treasurer Cece Fang, her first term. TJ and I are going to somehow do this poll. Actually, TJ is doing all of it because I'm low tech, but <laughs> so here we go. <laughs> All right, Jan, we have two more people entering the waiting okay. room. No, that's great. And then the poll seems like it's ready to go. I haven't done a poll on a Zoom since last May, so I'm assuming it's going to work smoothly, but it should pop up in a moment for everyone. Let me try. Yay. Look at that. So if people can make a selection, and then all right i'm just making sure everyone has the opportunity to complete the poll all right, so every person on the meeting currently has entered their response. So I'm going to end the poll at this time. Jen, do you want me to share the results now or with you later? I, uh, I think, well, Nicole didn't tell me what to do about that. Um, I think share it now, I think, unless it's bad. I don't know. <laughs> Can everyone see the results? Yes. All right, so definitely not bad. That's exciting. <laughs> Congratulations to all of those voted in. We certainly appreciate the time commitment and the support. Certainly not something we take for granted. The, the parental support we get at hand has been incredible. So I'm going to stop sharing. And Jen, I'll figure out how to send this to Nicole just for our records. Perfect. At another time. That's awesome. You know, and if worst case scenario, if I erase it all we'll still have the recording of this meeting so yeah we'll be yeah. in a good spot perfect Definitely. thank you for doing that i would have been so up all night if i had to be in charge of that you would have been great <laughs> um just a couple more things from the pto um april and may are busy with recognition of faculty and staff nine administrative staff in the main counseling and athletic offices received handwritten thank you notes and a gift card to madison coffee house and our two nurses on staff will be recognized in May on Nurses Day. Um, Teacher Appreciation Week is next week. On Tuesday, teachers will enjoy 13 dozen donuts from Neil's Donuts. That's always a favorite. And then Wednesday, they'll be treated to a luncheon. And Friday, they can stop by a snack bar for some treats to get them through the day. Uh, you should have received a link in our sign up uh, to our sign up genius in Friday's e notify, and you'll have another chance this Friday. There are specific items to donate, or you can have us do the shopping and Venmo uh, your contribution to Daniel Hand PTO. 
Uh, donations can be dropped off on Monday and Tuesday of next week. There'll be a cart by the security desk. Keep your eyes on the PTO Facebook page as we will highlight many of the upcoming year, uh, end of year activities because there will be many. And I hope you guys have a great day. It's great, Jen. And we certainly appreciate all of the appreciation. You know, the it's been a great year, but I think, you know, teaching teachers get the summer off because the job's so hard. And, you know, any recognition that we can give to our entire faculty is always greatly appreciated. I always chuckle when I hear, you know, 13 dozen Neil's Donuts. <laughs> I want to see you when you pick those up, but that's really appreciative. And next week is not only Teacher Appreciation Week, like Jan mentioned, but also the entire week is Nurses Appreciation Week. And during that week, it's on the Wednesday. That's actually Nurses Day. So we'll do some things as well. And we certainly you know, appreciate all of the support all year. Anyone have any questions about any of those topics for Jan or for me before we switch gears? All right, thank you. Sherry, your last PTO update for Night and Hand, which is pretty exciting. And you know, feel free to share as much as you can, although we don't have another PTO meeting. If there's anything you need us to communicate moving forward, we can do so via e-notify. Thanks, TJ. So we're in the final push. Um, have a couple of updates for you all. Uh, the, the yard signs are in. And uh, we did a big pickup last week and had a lot of parents come out. Um, the next and final official pickup will be this Saturday, May 6th, at the Sports Shed at hand during the mattress sale. So if you have not picked up your yard sign, please do so then. We have about 30 remaining memory boards that have not been picked up. Um, we've done three uh, pickup times already. So if uh, you or anyone you know has not picked up. We won't have another official pickup time, but you all can contact Dorada Zeller or Maxine Howard or email our uh, night in hand uh, email to try to arrange a pickup. Those are due back to Dorada and Maxine by May 15th so that they can uh, begin the work on hanging them in the hallway in June. Uh, the night in hand design committee is looking for help with uh, a building project. So if you have a few hours to volunteer and um, they say you just need some skills with a nail and hammer, uh, if you wanna send your email to Liz Kinch or you can use the Night in Hand main email and they would really appreciate your help. Um, Sign Up Genius is going to be going out, I believe at the end of this week regarding some food items that we're asking to be donated at Night in Hand. Um, just like last year, there'll be a bin uh, that we'll be checking regularly um, at the front uh, front office, I think it is, TJ. Is that where we left it last year? Um, and they'll be coming by to check that. So if you could keep an eye out for that. Um, and then finally, we really, really, really need volunteers. Um, our volunteer numbers kind of dipped during COVID and they haven't um, returned to normal levels. So we're looking for volunteers to help June 14th in the evening, we'll be moving all of the decorating, the big uh, murals and things into the auxiliary gym. So we're looking for help with that on the night of June 14th. June 15th and June 16th, we'll be busy uh, decorating hand. So we're looking for help there. And then of course, we're always looking for help on the night of the event. Um, everybody wants the um, nine to 11 shift. Um, so we need people 11 to three. So uh, 11 to five, actually, if you have the time and you want to uh, volunteer for a two hour, four hour shift, we'll take what we can get, but we definitely need parent volunteers. Um, it always works out great. If uh, mom and dad are both available and you want to come do a shift together, we can keep you together. So um, that's all I have TJ, we just need lots and lots of volunteers at this point to bring it all together. It's great, Sherry. Thank you for joining us on a monthly basis. Great event. I'm glad it's going to continue. I always worry if, if we don't have the volunteers, it doesn't move forward. So that's a really important piece. You know, one of my favorite days of the year is that graduation day when we get to do the walkthrough and then head down to the green. That's really exciting. And the way the calendar worked out this year is actually perfect. So it shouldn't be as much of a rush, rush and chaos with students out of the building for the setup. So hopefully it works out well. And Sherry, keep us in the loop if there's anything we could communicate about this event. Because again, it's designed for our students to have a great evening that's safe. You know, that, that's our biggest concern the night of graduation, that they have a great time and they're safe. So very, very positive. Thank you again, Sherry. All right. 
Mr. Bodner is going to join us now. He is going to discuss our class council selection process for the 2023 slash 24 school year. And Mr. Bodner, if you need to share anything on your screen, you have that access. If you don't, that's totally fine, but you do have that ability. Thank you, Mr. Salutary. So everyone, what I have um, opened up is on our web page. I, under the student's heading, went to the class officer applications page, which again is what is currently visible. And you will see our process is defined here. Students received an email on Friday, alerting them to the fact that um, the process had begun. The first major deadline that students must meet as I scroll down is May 10th. And by May 10th, they must turn in to Mrs. Heller, who is Mrs. Witcher, my secretary in the main office. They must turn into her by 3.30 in the afternoon on May 10th, their signed signature page that will include signatures from teachers that they have gathered supporting their candidacy. And this is really, the purpose of this is to show that they're a student in good standing. Mrs. Witcher and I then take those, those pages and review who is interested using the criteria that I'm scrolling back up to that is listed here on our web page. So the, all candidates must meet the following criteria, and you can see there are eight items that are listed there, and I'm not going to read them all loud, but one of them is Mrs. Witcher and I have to check um, students' obvious academic status, and we have to look at that. We also have to look at attendance and, again, make sure that they have um, completed the appropriate paperwork. One thing that is important is that if they are presently a member of their class council, it is important that they receive um, a signature from one of the class advisors that verifies that they have been participative. And, the, you know, in order for them to run for re-election, we need to know that the job they were elected to do a year ago, that they were actually doing it. So those are all things that are important. Lastly, once they have been given um, the go-ahead that there's nothing holding them back by uh, on, by May 16th, by 11.59 p.m., um, so a minute shy of midnight, they need to have their class officer essays submitted. And um, Mrs. Witcher and I, again, review those, make sure that everything, that if someone you know, submitted it that came in correctly in the correct format. And then essays become available for students to read. As you can see here with these tabs, students would click on their class, be able to read the candidate essays, and we will vote on Thursday, May 25th. So this is a process that we have followed for many years now. It has been effective. Deadlines are enforced and there's um, they're strongly enforced it's important if your child is interested in running for their class council that they meet those deadlines if there are you know any questions about this i'd be happy to answer them i have a question um so do all the students vote is that is that who votes the Thank you. Yes, the, the students within that grade vote and the top eight vote getters are elected to the grades um, class council. So the top eight students in the voting, um, sometimes a class may only have eight students that are even running for office. Other times there may be as many as 15. Either way, the 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 top eight finishers, if we have a tie at number eight, we have extended it to nine when that occurs at not having a runoff. It's just, um, you know, what we've done in past practice. So it is typically eight. Occasionally it could be nine or, you know, I would hope not, but it could be less if we didn't have as much interest in a grade. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Okay. Staying on the website, I'm just going to go to our e, to the parents header and to our e-notify archive. And the reason I am heading here is 
an e-notify went out yesterday to our current 10th grade students, members of the class of 2025, about a leadership opportunity to be a Board of Education representative. This was sent to our students, but if your student, you know, for some reason reported either not being able to locate the email or find it, you can see it is right here on our website in the e-notify archive. And this is an opportunity that, um, comes up only once in high school for students. And each year we have um, a, an application process for a member of our 10th grade to apply to be a Board of Ed representative. This is a two-year commitment. It is a two-year position. And I will explain some of the details of what it entails. But this is, again, something where a student will submit to uh, Mr. Salutary, um, and it will actually, technically it comes to me, but Mr. Salutary was the person who had sent the email, and we will review a group of students who are interested in this with members of the Board of Education, with members of central office, and ultimately select a student to be a Board of Ed representative. They will work next year with a member of the class of 2024. So they will work alongside someone who has been in the position for a year, and they will be expected with this commitment to meet with Mr. Salutary on a bi-weekly basis throughout the school year. So they'll meet with him every other week. Um, they will also be expected to attend student leadership meetings along with members of class council and other leaders throughout our building. And they will be expected to attend um, Board of Education meetings twice a month. They are every other Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. during the school year. So it's a big commitment, but also an exciting opportunity for a young person who I think not only is excited by local government and what they could do within their community and to better their community, but it's also a position that offers our Board of Education an opportunity to you know, interact with and communicate directly with students who are here in our building and to receive reports from them, again, on a um, you know, bi-monthly basis. So this is something that, um, again, if you feel your student would be interested in, please encourage them to submit their, their um, application by Tuesday, May 23rd. And the, de the deadline for that is also at 11.59 p.m. So again, a, a May 23rd deadline by 11.59 p.m. if they want to be considered for this opportunity. If there are any questions regarding this position, I would be happy to answer them. Okay. The final topic that I will discuss and then turn things over to Mrs. Witcher is we have some pre-prom assemblies coming up. I will speak as the senior class administrator this year about the senior class pre-prom assembly. That assembly will be held on May 25th. We will hold it during period two, as we know, um, you know, number of students are free during period one and all students, again, need to be to the high school by the start of period two. So it'll be a period two assembly. And our presenter will be Kara Filler. She is someone that we have had here at the high school um, in recent years, who's done a tremendous job and really connected with our students and our students, um, you know, I very much you know, enjoyed hearing her personal story and also her words of wisdom and advice that she shares with them. And she, again, is someone that really by um, the feedback that we've received from our students, we've reached out to her again. And she you know, flies across country to come here to Daniel Han um, to do her presentation every year. So we're excited about that. And I will now turn things over to Mrs. Witcher to discuss the junior pre-prom assembly. Mr. Bodner, if you could just shut off the screen share, that would be awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Bodner. So I'm gonna actually just share my screen. 
So the junior pre-prom assembly, I'm just going to scroll up. So Harriet Turk is the presenter for the junior pre-prom assembly. Um, that's going to take place on Wednesday, May 17th. Similar to what Mr. Bodner um, showed you previously about the eNotify archive, if you want to go back into that archive as well, an eNotify was sent out on April 21st with all of the details for the junior prom. So if anyone's interested in just going back and, and and refreshing their memory, it's back in that archive as well. Um, so the pre-prom assembly will take place again on May 17th, two days before the actual prom. It will also be during period two. Harriet Turk is the presenter. She has a variety of programs, not just for schools, also for businesses. Um, but you can learn a little bit more about Harriet under her programs, under youth programs. She offers um, a few of them, specifically the one that she's presenting at our, for our students is the one that's called Just Dying for a Drink. It is focused mainly on um, drunk driving and statistics and real life stories around trying to encourage students to party in style and what that means, basically trying to um, remain sober and not use other substances. So that is the theme for our junior pre-prom assembly. During that time, so after the assembly, we also have John Steady coming to speak to the juniors about senior portraits. So he will talk to the students about senior portraits that usually takes place over the summer, which is why we talk about it um, at the junior pre-prom assembly time. So if you have any questions regarding senior portraits, you can reach directly out to John Steady. You can reach out to the school, but also just ask your student about it. He'll provide them information about the senior portrait opportunities at that pre-prom assembly time. Um, I am going to just pause for a minute and see if there's any questions for either Brian or myself regarding prom or pre-prom before I move on to the next topic. I have a question. Are we supposed to, um, are, are we supposed to buy senior prom tickets in, um, in an infinite campus? Is that where we go for those? Thanks, Jan. Great question. So junior prom is right around the corner. Seniors close. This Friday, all parents, guardians, and seniors will receive a pretty lengthy message about the senior prom that includes the ticket sales. So that will be an infinite campus starting very soon. You haven't missed that opportunity yet. Junior prom, that tickets are on sale right now. And that window closes a couple of weeks before the actual event because we have to let the venue know how many are attending. So that you'll have plenty of time, but that's coming at almost exactly four o'clock PM on Friday. That will go to all members of the class of 23. And juniors um, have to purchase their tickets by May 15th. So they have the next two weeks to purchase their tickets. Thank you. Any, uh, no problem, Jen. Any other questions about the pre-prom assemblies or the proms? Certainly exciting times. And one thing I will mention, you know, going to the prom is pretty expensive. Just like it seems like almost everything is pretty expensive right now. If anyone has financial difficulties, like a prom ticket, for example, junior prom tickets are $80. The senior prom are $110. So they're certainly not inexpensive. Anyone could reach out to me privately. We keep those conversations confidential. And we want to make sure all students attend any event they want to attend. And we don't want any finances to be an issue. So again, you know, that could be a student meeting with me, a parent email. I do keep all of that confidential, but I did want to make sure that parents were especially aware of that option because, again, we want our students to attend if they're interested and attended and not hold back because of finances. So, Mrs. Witcher, are you going to switch gears into some standardized testing for our juniors? Sure. Excellent. Um, Thanks. So we are wrapping up the, the testing season. Many of your students are probably participating in some type of AP testing, which started yesterday. That'll continue through the next two weeks. And then the final test for the year uh, for juniors is the NGSS assessment. So I'm just going to share my screen one more time. 
spoke about this at the last meeting, but I do want to just reiterate um, the plan for the NGSS assessment. So all students in grade 11 will participate. The date is Wednesday, March, I'm sorry, May, Wednesday, May 24th. Juniors have to arrive at 720 on the test day. However, all other students will arrive at a two hour delay. So grade nine, 10 and 12 all can come in for that 925 time frame. And then this assessment has to be completed digitally. So similar to the SAT, you have to bring in your school issued Chromebook. You will not be able to take the assessment on a Mac or any other personal device. Um, if your student is saying for any reason that their Chromebook isn't working or that just they, you know, the, the trackpad is a little glitchy or I'm, you know, I'm missing a key or anything along those lines, now is the time to stop by the, the library, go to the tech office, um, let them fix it, let them either trade it out, do a swap for you, whatever they might need. Um, we don't want to wait till test day to have some of those, those issues resolved. So you can have your child go to the LMC at any time to get their Chromebook looked at, updated, et cetera. Um, but that will be the final official standardized test assessment for the year for hand. I'll answer any questions that you may have on that test or, or any of our other um, testing that's currently taking place. Thank you, Mrs. Witcher. And I'll mention the NGSS, you know, in our students' mind, I don't think it has the high stakes that the SAT does, but I would ask the parents of all juniors, just encourage your kids to do their best. We want our student performance to reflect the quality of our school, and they usually do really well on our assessments. This one is, you know, they feel like another test. Everyone's coming in late. You know, we're looking at this model of testing earlier in the morning and having a delay for the other students to see, you know, how the students respond and the feedback we got from the test setting for SAT was pretty positive. But if again, we could encourage our juniors to try their best and you know we would appreciate that just because we want their performance to reflect again the quality of this high school. Mrs. Witcher, anything else you want to add on NGSS? No, I think that's it. Thank you, TJ. Excellent. I'll be sending the schedule out this week just so parents can see what the two hour delay looks like and buses will run. You know, it was pretty seamless for the SAT on both days and that worked out really well. So, Mrs. Witcher, thanks for taking on the standardized testing, scheduling and planning at the school. I know that's not an easy task. I did want to reiterate the two topics Mr. Bodner presented on class council and student board of ed rep. Those are really interesting leadership opportunities for students, hopefully, and we usually do. Hopefully, a lot of the students will consider those and it, again, affords kids some leadership opportunities during high school that are not as common in those particular roles. So we followed this process of class council selection members and board of ed rep, student reps for years, and it's worked out really, really well. And the proms are really exciting times. The pre-prom assemblies are just trying to encourage good behavior. We remind the students that we want all positive memories from these events and, you know, making good decisions about driving and drug use is a really important topic. And, you know, we take that head on and the presenters are excellent. We get great feedback, especially Kara Filler, who has been here for years. She is moving in a different direction we hear, but she loves coming to hand. So we're excited to have her back and it should be really good events. We encourage you to speak to your children about those after they take place. So a couple of things, I'm going to switch gears to the end of the year events, just so people have an idea of what's right around the corner. We'll be sending out a lot of this information. So again, just a reminder, this is being recorded, so you don't have to necessarily try and write everything down, although you certainly can. We'll be sending out some individual information and we'll also post this information on our website as soon as it's ready to go. So I'm going to share my screen just so people have an idea of what's coming around around the corner in the last few weeks. So yesterday it has begun and it has the AP testing for College Board. We have a variety of tests being administered over the course of the next couple of weeks. You can see starting yesterday, 
through May 12th. Some of the courses that you might see listed, we don't even have a section running, for example, but some of our students have done some self-study in a particular area and they can still take the AP test. And that is actually really exciting to see students that motivated, but it's a very busy schedule. There's a lot of testing going on. So there are some, you know, obviously classes missed. You know, there's days when we don't have announcements or bells ringing, but these are communicated to the students who are enrolled in those classes and TBD for location, that's truly dependent on number of students. You know, if it's a really large group, we find a big setting obviously, and the opposite applies. For the NGSS, Mrs. Witcher just clarified that upcoming assessment on May 24th, we have four UConn ECE exams as well coming up that students are made aware of if they're in those particular classes. And you could see when they meet, just a reminder, when you see DAH, that means dining and assembly hall. And these assessments are not only important for our students, but they've worked really hard over the course of the year. So we try to provide the best test setting possible. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Some of the other events and the wrap up of the year for all of our students, the exam schedule does not pertain to seniors. But, you know, on May 17th, we'll send some information out about our art show. That's Daniel Hand. I attended the K-12 art show. Incredible, you know, the work from kindergarten all, all the way through 12th grade. Seeing this, the 9th through 12th grade student artwork displayed throughout our building on May 17th and then going to enjoy a, a band and jazz band concert is really a great day. We have orchestra concerts. Mr. Bodner is taking on the 8th grade incoming club fair and tours for the class of 2027. The school counseling department is going to be running some interesting workshops with all of our juniors. You'll hear more about that soon. We talked about the prom, and then you could see a few of the other things listed. I'm not going to read them all, but if you are looking at year-end planning, the trimester three exams have been scheduled, you know, June 9th, which is a Friday, and the 12th and 13th, which is a Monday and Tuesday. We always have a makeup day for exams, just in case a student misses. And it's really important that you've marked these dates because we have to wrap the year up, you know, in a very short time frame after that last day of school. Couple of reminders for exams. If a student has a free period, period one, if they can get to school for second period without needing transportation from a bus, they do not have to attend during that period. And on the June 14th date, if they've taken all of their exams, they actually don't come to school that day. That is designed specifically for a makeup day. The schedule works out well. One of the changes that you may notice on the exam times is we typically would get out at 1215. Due to early release days scheduled across the district, we have to follow our typical early release time so we don't interfere with bus transportation for K-8. So the dismissal time will be at 11 30 on each of those days. We just shorten the window in between from 30 minutes to 15 minutes, which should work out really, really well. But those dates are set. The next list is for members of the class of 2023. If you notice the notes on top, as I mentioned, there's a senior prom letter going out Friday on May 5th to all members of the class of 2023. Then class remarks invitation Saturday on May 6th at noon, all of our seniors will get an invitation if they're interested to write a speech that we review and we select one student to deliver class remarks during the actual graduation graduation ceremony. Usually we get between five and 20 students apply for that unique opportunity, but it's a great chance for a student who might want to give a speech during graduation to be considered. There's lots of details in that particular memo to the seniors, and it's also being sent to their parents and guardians. So hopefully we get some applicants. And then Friday on May 12th, which is a week from this Friday, parents guardians and all members of the class of 2023 will get a pretty extensive memo from me that has every single event and all of the details of each of the events listed. They're summarized below, but the document that we'll send has all of the specific details in chronological order. It's a great one to print and hang on your refrigerator just so you don't miss any of the really good events that are coming up. But you, know, you can see just a few of them listed here from 
announcement picture day that we sent a memo home. There's a senior assembly we talked about and a few of these items we've talked about already. But I think you want to pay particular attention to the T3 exams in this particular area that are during the school days on June 8th and June 9th. And one thing that seniors, I'm sure they're aware of this, but we do have an exemption policy in most of our courses, not all, but if a student has an 89.5 or higher final average, they're exempt from the exam. So they do have the opportunity, hopefully that motivates students to, you know, do well throughout the remainder of the school year. It usually does, but those exams are taken during the school day on June 8th and June 9th. June 12th is a makeup day. This particular class didn't seem very interested in a class trip. There was very, very little interest. So instead, we're doing a senior picnic on June 12th with a field day combined. Nice low-key fun event on Jansen Field. And after that event, they're literally going to walk over to our dining and assembly hall. That's when they'll get their cap and gown for graduation. They'll also get tickets for graduation. That's if they don't have any obligations. So if they lost their, you know, a push textbook or something or have a parking ticket they didn't pay, they get a bill that day instead of the cap and gown and tickets. But there's plenty of time for them to have a resolution to whatever they're missing regarding obligations. And then they'll get their cap and gown on that June 12th. They'll attend not really school, but they'll show up at school for a senior brunch on June 13th, which is a great event in the morning, and then they're free the rest of the afternoon. Senior awards, great event at 6 o'clock p.m. on Wednesday, June 14th. And then there's two mandatory graduation rehearsals on the town green from 11. One o'clock is should have a little asterisk by it. That's dependent on how we do with the rehearsals. We used to do three rehearsals. We found that two works well enough, but we want to make sure all the students know what to do during that particular event. And we also like to have them with us, you know, the days before graduation just so you know we get to spend some time with the class before graduation if you notice that second rehearsal is actually on the day of graduation so they'll come we'll do a walkthrough some final discussions usually someone from night at hand comes and talks about the night at hand event then we dismiss the students around one o'clock and we encourage them to enjoy the rest of the afternoon safely and then they meet us back on the green at 515 to get ready for the actual graduation. So if you're looking at all these dates and trying to write everything down, again, I will be sending full detail next Friday with you know, chronological order. We're waiting for a little more information on two other topics that our seniors need to be aware of around the when they have to hand back their Chromebooks, that particular process. And we also give all of our seniors an opportunity to take all or any of the particular work they have in Google and move it over to their own personal Gmail and Google accounts. Because once they leave Daniel Hand High School, when we turn off their accounts, which is in September, of the next school year, they have no more access to any of the documents or any items if they created an art portfolio, for example. They will lose all of that information. We give them the entire summer, and there's the processes explained in this memo, where they can take any or all of the information or anything they've created over their four years at hand and move that over into their own personal files so they don't lose whatever they think is important for them to keep. Once September hits and we flip the switch and turn it off, in most cases, everything is deleted and disappears. You know, I do think there is a chance to get it back, but I would encourage everyone to you know, be proactive and make that transfer of documents, you know, electronically before that deadline. Works out really well, and we haven't had a student yet have an issue with transferring to their own accounts. And again, that process will be explained. So there's certainly a lot of things coming up. All of them are really exciting. This is a great time of the year for everyone in school. Hopefully parents and students are excited as well. Does anyone have any questions about those particular you know, dates, again, there were a ton of them, but we'll be sending those out electronically and putting them on our website as well. We just wanted to give people an idea so they had, you know, a 
a chance to start planning. If you're wondering if you're a parent of a class of 23 graduates, you do get six tickets for graduation. That's typically more than enough. If there's ever a need for more, there's a process you could request more by contacting me. But if you're starting to plan that event, you can plan on having up to six people attend with you. That's within the fenced in area. Again, anyone could attend outside that fenced in area. So it's a great event and we're actually looking forward to it. It's the class of 23 has been a lot of fun to work with over the past four years. Any questions on any of those? Again, that's a lot of information. It doesn't have to be specific to the senior class. There's other things going on as well. Hey, TJ, I have a question. I know we're missing um, a Chromebook cord. Will the kids know before that picnic day that they owe, or is that the day they find out? Question, Jan. So we start to post on the bridge and on the front pillars inside the building, students' names who have an obligation. It could be as simple as, you know, an extra Chromebook cord wasn't returned or lost. And we encourage them to resolve it before the cap and gown distribution, because then they get their cap, gown, and tickets. If not, they get a list of the items they owe. And a lot of our students, it's usually textbooks where they go home under their bed in their closet or somewhere in their house, they find them and return them. We clarify those obligations and literally hand them their cap and gown. If you look at the particular date for the cap and gown distribution, that's on June 12th. So we, we do it early enough where we don't intend to stress a student out. Like if we did it on June 15th and there was an obligation and you didn't get your cap and gown the day before, I get it, but there's plenty of time and we make sure Mrs. Evans is available in the main office where a student could resolve some of those issues literally that day, preferably before, but some students don't you know, pay attention to what's posted on the bridge or on the front entrance until they don't get their cap and gown, but it's usually an easy resolution. Sometimes it's just a fee. You know, if a student has a, you know, a significant lunch account balance that they haven't paid over the years, you know, that cap, gown, and tickets don't get distributed until they pay whatever they owe. So really good question, but we try to be proactive. I will say there are a lot of reactive responses to that just when we're actually in that event. But you know, because we're doing it at one o'clock, some students will resolve any obligations they have before they even leave that day. And do you take credit cards or do you need checks? How does that, or do you pay through Infinite Campus? How does that work? Through Infinite Campus, most of the time, I, I will say, Jan, the majority is lost items that are usually in a bedroom or a closet. And, you know, that's why we give students a few days and it's entertaining sometimes to see them come back with the pile of books they just haven't returned. And, you know, in some cases, if it's something that we could manage, we, we'll manage that ourselves, but we try not to overburden, but we do need especially technology back and textbooks back because that's for next year's students. So I would start if I was a member or a parent of a upcoming graduate to start talking about, you know, have you handed everything in, you know, look under your bed in your closet, because a lot of those items that don't get returned are somewhere safe. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? All right. I like to thank everyone for attending, not only today, but all throughout the year. I see a lot of people who have attended consistently. Also, just a quick shout out. PTO has been incredible. The executive board really has been a great support, just like the entire community. Jan, to you and all the executive board members, we just want to say thank you very much. You know, as a high school, parent involvement usually starts to slide, not at hand. It's been incredible over our time here. So we really appreciate the support. And we do look forward to seeing everyone at all of the upcoming events. And hopefully you could attend a lot of the things like the concerts, for example, and art shows, as well as the other events that are scheduled. And I hope everyone stays healthy. And thank you all for the support.